Hello, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director here at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Uh, today we're going to be covering another of the Quadrant materials, specifically the Tektron product. Um, now there are two materials in the Tektron family uh, from Quadrant. They are both based on the PPS uh, resin system, which is polyphenylene sulfide. And uh, the two materials we're going to be talking about today are the straight Tektron, which is the unfilled material, and Tektron HPV, which is a uh, very, very good and very unique bearing grade material. Now, Tektron, uh, or PPS in general, is uh, an interesting material. It's what we would consider to be kind of a tweener material. Uh, which means that it's a, a material that has the physical properties of uh, other high-performance materials, uh, but from a price standpoint, you're really closer to engineering plastics like uh, your nylons and your acetals and your polyester materials. So it kind of fits right in between in terms of cost-effectiveness, but it has many of the very strong properties of high-performance materials. Um, around TriStar, we like to refer to it as poor man's peak, because as you see as we go through some of the uh, some of the information here, it has many of the same properties as peak, but with a slightly lower temperature range, and and that's really the only trade-off that we uh, we see. So um, let's take a look again at our infamous triangle, and you can see here that the uh, PPS product, the Tektron product. Uh, is uh, right up in the uh, high performance materials right along with peak and polyether imids and some of the materials that you uh, um, are aware of that meet uh, 400 plus degree operating temperatures um, but as we look at some of the main characteristics you'll see that a lot of these are very similar to peak um, first of all the continuous operating temperature of the Tektron is 425 degrees F um, that's obviously uh, a, a number considerably higher than the engineering plastics, which are typically in the 180 to 220 degree range. So you've got uh, a couple hundred extra degrees of operating temperature. It's about 60 or 70 degrees below peak. So that's why we say it's one of those tweener materials. It, uh, it just fits right there in the middle uh, in terms of temperature function. Um, in terms of its physical strength, it's got excellent retention, as do all the high-performance materials. Um, so mechanical strength, creep resistance, stiffness, all of these features that you expect in a high-performance material are uh, maintained um, across its operating temperatures, and um, so you don't see a significant drop-off until you get up to uh, or close to its... Uh, deflection temperatures. Um, moisture absorption is virtually zero with this material. In fact, uh, uh, we'll see a chart here in a few minutes that shows that it's uh, uh, closest, the closest to zero as you can get in any of the uh, uh, thermoplastic materials. Um, because of its dimensional stability, this material can be machined to very tight tolerances. And it's a fairly easy material to machine um, you know, if you pay attention, so you can get really nice parts, good clean parts, uh, but most importantly, parts that have good dimensional stability. Um, the Tektron materials do very well in gamma radiation and other sterilization techniques, so um, it is a material that is used quite frequently in uh, FDA applications um, where uh, you might be exposing it to gamma radiation. Uh, chemical resistance is uh, very, very similar to peak. Uh, there are very few things that affect it um, uh, very critically. And so it's a very strong uh, material in terms of its chemical uh, exposures and uh, can be used in a lot of uh, chemical components um, and um, in, in the whole, almost the whole spectrum of the pH range. Um, low flammability, that's kind of an inherent factor. Uh, with the Tektron and the Tektron HPV. Now, um, talking about the moisture absorption, you can see here on this chart that uh, PTFE, which is uh, usually listed as nil, 
Um, but the Tektron material and PPS uh, in general is uh, right there close. Um, it's less than peak, it's less than Ultum, and it's obviously very, very uh, much lower than the imidized material like Torlon. Now let's talk first about the uh, straight Tektron material. Even though that's the trade name, Tektron is also the unfilled version of uh, this family. Um, uh, most of the PPS that you see on the market is usually going to have some kind of a filler. There's a lot of, uh, uh, of the Riton product out there, or Fortron, um, where glass fibers, carbon fibers, and other, other fillers are used. <clears throat> and that's primarily because of, uh, you know, a historically difficult material to process in some ways. Um, but the Tektron material, being a virgin material, allows for a lot of interesting applications. And uh, one of those is that it is FDA compliant. If you have glass and carbon fillers in it, you won't have that compliancy. So that's kind of a key point here uh, to keep in mind um, that uh, it is a very effective material when it comes to uh, some medical instrument and biologi uh, biological applications. Um, again, as I mentioned before, the retention of mechanical strength. Um, it's a very good candidate if you're looking at structural components in place of peak and certainly in place of uh, the softer materials like uh, filled Teflons. Um, a lot of applications where you can use Tektron to replace metal, like stainless steel or steel, uh, because of that very strong mechanical uh, uh, potential. Um, again, zero moisture absorption. Uh, steam service is not a problem, uh, so autoclaving is not an issue. The tight tolerances, as I mentioned before, um, and then, so, again, this being that infamous tweener material and, and also uh, um, a poor man's peak, if your temperature is uh, at 425, um, this is a very, very good straight across replacement in most properties to peak. Now, the Tektron HPB, which is the bearing grade version, um, is uh, unique in terms of its makeup. There are other bearing grade PPSs out there, uh, but the HPV material from Quadrant is, is unique in how it's made in terms of its fillers. Um, again, we get the same mechanical properties, all of the, uh, the very strong mechanical properties, uh, and so for a bearing application, again, with the temperature being the driving force here, it's a very good material to replace uh, bearing grade peaks if the conditions warrant. Um, the zero moisture absorption steam service holds true for the HPV. Um, you can hold tight tolerances on it. The chemical resistance again comes into play. Um, it's not affected by solvents under 392 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, again, we can use this in a lot of chemical applications in terms of pumps and valves and things like that. Um, the HPV is also FDA compliant, even though it's uh, not white, it's blue. The, uh, the straight Tektron is white, um, but the uh, HPV is a very distinct, distinguishable color of blue. Um, again, under 425 degrees, it's a great replacement for a bearing grade peak. Um, now, one of the other areas that we've had a lot of success with this uh, HPV material is in the food processing industry. Um, it's a very, very strong candidate because it's unaffected by uh, the CIP solutions that are being used now. Um, so, you know, for either bearing applications or structural applications in the food industry, um, again, a very, very strong candidate. Um, and then low friction and wear properties uh, compared to a lot of the other polymers, especially, again, if you're looking at comparing it with uh, uh, PEAK or even PTFE in some cases. Uh, this next chart shows the relative wear. You know, when we talk about wear factor with plastics, we're talking about their K factor. And so you can see here that the, uh, the Tektron HPV has a K factor uh, of 62, uh, which is less than um, the acetyl materials. It's less than the peak HPV, which is the bearing grade peak. And, and obviously, it's a much better material over an unfilled P 
PPS or an unfilled peak. So um, as you can see though, the uh, wear factor is very, very low on this material relative to other, other materials. The other uh, key factor is uh, limiting PV. We want to know what the uh, PV ratings are of any material that we're using as a bearing when it comes to plastic bearings. And so as we take a look at some of the uh, same materials here, the acetals um, have a fairly low PV, 2700. And again, uh, if, if you remember previous uh, discussions that we've had, PV stands for pressure times velocity and it is a number, uh, a rating number that is given to every polymer um, and every plain bearing material for that matter and uh, it's an important factor when we're trying to determine whether a material will stand up to loads and speeds of any given application. So uh, obviously the lower the number, uh, the lower potential it is in terms of its bearing capabilities. Uh, but you can see here that Tektron HPV uh, is rated at 8750. Um, the Keytron, uh, just you know, because of its inherent uh, capabilities in terms of higher PVs, is up up to 20,000. And these numbers are with a four a four time safety factor. So, uh, if you consider that the uh, HPV material, the Tektron HPV material, very very good bearing material for a lot of the mid range load and speed applications. Now this is another summary uh, chart that gives you an idea of where the Tektron HPV falls into uh, uh, with other materials. You can see here we've got uh, kind of a recap, the PV of the, H the Tektron HPV being 8750, K factor being 62. Um, you can see the, the workable pH range of the Tektron is, uh, is even better than the peak. Uh, the dimensional stability. Um, of the Tektron HPV 3.3 uh, versus the unfilled materials and then finally the moisture absorption. So this this quick look of, of the properties gives you a, a, a nice little overview of where the Tektron HP falls into, um, into play with um, other plastic materials. Um, but the bottom line is that the the Tektron HPV again we consider it to be um, a very, very good alternative in both structural applications and bearing applications to uh, peak materials, especially if you've got operating temperatures um, in, the, uh, in the 425, especially in the 300 to 425 range. There's really no real adequate materials other than Tektron and Tektron HPV for those types of applications. So it's um, you know, it, it just fits a very interesting niche for us, especially when we're designing bearings. A couple of applications just to talk about real quickly. Um, one of them for the HPV is as a vein material. Um, this is a rotary pump, and in, uh, in the past, the customer has used uh, thermosets like uh, phenolics, cotton phenolics, things like that. And in this particular application, where there was a lot of different exposures, um, in terms of chemical attacks and, uh, and just um, un unpredictable wear, the uh, customer uh, decided to make the change to the HPV because of the factors we talked about, dimensional stability, low moisture absorption, uh, great PV numbers on it, low coefficient of friction, um, and just a, a number of different uh, um, reasons to make that change. The, um, the thermoset materials, as you can imagine, are pretty brittle. And uh, as they age, they get even more brittle and begin to crack and, uh, and fail. So this Tektron HPV was a good replacement application uh, for this particular design. And um, the next one we'll take a look at. This is a little bit unusual. Um, this is an application where a customer has developed a, um, a microwave system for actually um, mixing, if you will, um, uh, different materials, different fluid materials, and using microwave energy to cause that mixture to accelerate. And in this particular case, uh, because of the different chemicals involved, because of the release properties required, um, they use a PTFE liner, but they needed something stiffer to function as a cup to hold that PTFE liner. So 
uh, we use the Tektron HPV to give them that, that stiffness, to give them a good elevated temperature material uh, inside the microwave, uh, to give them good chemical resistance for the potential of splash over or, or something else that might occur from the uh, liquids being, being tested, being uh, microwaved. Uh, and then more importantly is that uh, the Tektron is um, microwave transparent. So uh, they're able to get full energy of the microwave uh, through the, uh, the holder as well as the PTFE liner and uh, successfully uh, get that liquid to do what it's supposed to do. A few other applications that we'll just finish up with. And again, uh, the places we're going to use the Tektron and Tektron HPV is going to be in the replacement of PEAK or PTFE when you look at other polymers. Um, but it can also be used to replace other metals. Um, if some of the engineering polymers are, are right on the edge in terms of temperature, this is a good next step, again, because it's, it is cost competitive, um, even though it takes a much higher temperature. And uh, some examples of applications would be things like uh, pump lantern rings, um, flow meter rotors, uh, bearings for uh, food processing equipment, as we mentioned before, CMP rings. Uh, this is uh, something in the semiconductor market uh, and um, because of its dimensional stability, that's uh, one of the reasons they, they looked at the Tektron for that application. Chip nests and sockets. Uh, we have a few accounts that um, specifically want the Tektron because for their, their uh, nest and socket applications, they want the dimensional stability, but they want an unfilled material. Um, and so the Tektron has worked very, very well in those applications. And then uh, the dielectric values of the Tektron are very good too, so it makes a very good electrical insulator. So that's, that's a, a quick overview of the Tektron and the Tektron HPV. Again, excellent materials from the Quadrant uh, organization, and it's available in rod and sheet um, and uh, tubular bar. And so if you think this might be a good candidate for your uh, application, give us a call. We'll be happy to walk you uh, through the application. Be sure that this is the right call. Um, and as I, I keep saying, this is a great tweener material. It, it really fits a, a, a niche where um, a lot of polymers miss the boat or are just too costly. Um, so consider the Tektron, the Tektron HPB, uh, the next time you're in that uh, that no man's zone as far as temperatures go. Um, we appreciate you joining us again for another Tech Talk. And uh, uh, go to our website if you have any, uh, any other questions about the Tektron. The data sheets are on there. Uh, or you can just drop us a line through the Ask the Expert. Uh, check our blog site every now and then. We occasionally will have uh, information on applications, uh, specifically on the Tektron and the Tektron HPV. Um, so hope this has been of value to you, and uh, thanks again for joining us.